Okay, on this particular one, uh, there are several different ways that we can solve this one. If you were asked to graph this one, you could graph it and look for the intersection points. On this particular one, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to solve this one using the substitu substitution method. And both of these two are solved for y already. So that makes it nice. So we can really kind of pick either one of these and kind of uh, plug it into the other, and it will work. Uh, I have to pick one way, so I'm going to choose to... Uh, plug equation number one into equation number two. So the first thing I'm going to do is write equation number two down. So there's my equation number two. I haven't changed it. I just kind of rewrote it. It's really all I did. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in x squared for y because I know that y is equal to x squared. So I'm just going to plug that in right here. There's my x squared in red equals x plus 12. Okay, now we kind of have this and we've been solving these for some time. Now this is just a quadratic equation here. What we want to try to do is just to move everything onto one side. So we're going to move this x um, plus 12 onto the other side, subtract x, and subtract 12 from both sides. And when we do that, you're, here's your equation, x squared minus x minus 12. Now we've got this in a quadratic equation. There's a couple different ways that we can solve this. We can plug it into the quadratic formula. That will work. We can graph it and look for the intersection point um, where it crosses the... Uh, the x-axis. Uh, the easiest way for me, I can look at this one quickly and you can see that you can factor it. So I'm going to factor this. Uh, if I factor this one, uh, two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 12, but add together to give me negative 1 are negative 4 and positive 3. So there are my factors of it. Now x does not equal negative 4 and x does not equal 3. Uh, that, those are just your factors at this point. Now that we have our factors set up, I actually have to set each of them equal to zero and solve them. So that's going to be an x equals four and an x equals negative three. Okay, because that's x minus four equals zero and then we move the four onto the other side. Okay, so now I've solved it. I've got two different values that x can be. It can be a four and it can be a negative three. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that one in uh, and find out what my y value is. And to be honest, you can plug this into either equation here. It will work if you plug it into this one, and it will work if you plug it into this one. It does not matter. I have to choose one, so I just chose the second one. And I'm just going to start with this one first here. This x equals negative 3. Here's my second equation. Um, is it y equals x plus 12? And I know that x is negative 3, so negative 3 plus 12. And negative 3 plus 12, y would equal 9. So if x equals negative 3, y equals 9, so that's one of my answers, negative 3, 9. And I also know that x equals 4, so I'm going to plug that one in now. And again, you can plug it into either equation. I just plugged it into the second one. So I plug that into the second one. Uh, instead of x plus 12, it'll be 4 plus 12. 4 plus 12 is 16. So y equals 16 if x equals 4. So if I wrote that as an ordered pair, it would be 4 comma 16. Now, this will be fine for the test. When you enter it into the online system, it does ask you to write each ordered pair with a comma in between them. So you'll just write your answer like this. 4 comma 16, close parenthesis, comma, open parenthesis, negative 3 comma 9. And this is how you write it. And you can write this negative 3 comma 9 first and then the 4 comma 16 after. That's fine too. Either way, the computer will accept it.